If you missed the 10 wraps on part one, two, and three on selection, layers, and mass from the wrapping professor, or if you'd just like to look at all of them together in one place, then this video was designed with you in mind. If you want to learn Photoshop in a fun and easy way, click the like, subscribe, share, and notification buttons so that you don't miss any more video like this one. Let us talk about the first of three crucial Photoshop concept selection. While there are various ways of making a selection in Photoshop, the rectangular marquee tool will be used exclusively in this tutorial. Every selection operation will be done from the select menu for beginners. A more advanced user may want to use the keyboard shortcut that they are familiar with. To learn more advanced ways to make selection, see my training entitled Learning Selections from the Joes. Five ways to create selections. First, let us define what a selection is in Photoshop. While it may not be evident at first, a selection is a window to the underlying pixels of the active layer. Let us demonstrate this concept. It is best practice to add a separate layer for each object or effect that you intend to use in your project. To save time, I've already created four layers. Click the blank layers to select it. Use the rectangular marquee tool, draw a rectangle on the inside of the picture frame that would depict a window. To the underlying pixels. This step brings us to the first rule of selections. Wrap it with me now. You can see a selection defined when you see the digital ants marching in a line. You can always see a selection defined when you see the digital ant answers marching in a, line, in a line. This selection is commonly known as marching ants or simply a marquee. However, there's one exception to this rule, which brings us to rule number two of selections. Wrap it with me now. When nothing is explicitly selected, the whole canvas gets affected. When no pixel on a canvas is explicitly selected or easily seen with the marching ants, the whole canvas is selected, so the whole canvas gets affected. However, the problem is you can't see the selection. Let's illustrate this rule. Choose select, deselect to remove the current selection. Use the brush tool with a large white brush stroke and draw anywhere on the canvas. Notice how the whole canvas get affected when you paint anywhere on the canvas. Not exactly what we want to do in this exercise. While not necessary, if you want to get a warm and fuzzy feeling that you have the whole canvas selected when nothing is explicitly selected, choose Select All to see the digital ants marching around the whole canvas. So press Command or Control plus Z several times to undo the previous steps. This rule gives us insight to rule number three of selections. Wrap it with me now. Only what is selected gets affected. The golden rule in most applications, including Photoshop, is that only what is selected gets affected by what you do next, which include actions like transform, cut, copy, or delete. Let's look at an example. Choose select, reselect to reselect the previous selection. With the current brush tool option, paint across the selection on the canvas. Notice this time, however, only the area inside of the selection got affected by the brush strokes, which is a safe way to rule number four of selection. Wrap it with me now. What is not selected gets protected. Not 
What is not selected gets protected from any editing you may try to perform afterwards. With the brush tool, paint again to fill the entire selected area. Notice the area outside of the selection is protected from the brush strokes. However, what if you wanted to select the background instead of the object, in this case, the white picture insert? Well, let's look at rule number five of selection. Wrap it with me now. If you want to get to an object background, invert the selection all around. To cut out an object and leave its background, you can invert a selected object in the image. Select the picture frame layer in the layers panel. Choose select invert to invert the current selection. However, when the selection is inverted, what portion of the image is selected and what portion of the image is not selected is not always apparent. Shortly, you'll be able to see the selection using the second important concept in Photoshop, mask. Regardless of its type, any mask can do three things. Show, hide, or protect what's underneath it. However, before we talk about regular masks, it's important to note that the just created selection is a sort of invisible mask. Areas that are part of the selection can be edited whereas areas that are not part of the selection are masked or protected from any edits, as we have seen. Let's turn our attention to the first rule of mask. Wrap it with me now. Red conceals, clear reveals. Sometimes it's hard to know what is selected and what is not selected, especially if the selection has been inverted. However, a quick mask will show you what is selected and what is not selected in the form of a mask. Lame joke alert. A quick mask is a mask that's created quickly. Click the quick mask icon to enter the quick mask mode. The clear area reveals what is selected, and the red area conceals what is not selected. Now that you know what is selected and what is not selected, press the quick mask icon again to exit the quick mask mode and return to the normal selection mode. This statement brings us to rule number two of mask. Wrap it with me now. Black conceals, white reveals. When creating most mask types in Photoshop, the golden rule you may have learned in many books or training is black conceals and white reveals. However, the problem for most beginners is, what is the it that it conceals or reveals? Well, it depends upon the type of mask that is being applied. In this training module, I will discuss the layer mask, which is one of the easiest and most use of over half a dozen types of mask in Photoshop. For more ways of creating and using these various types of masks, see my advanced training entitled, Masking Made Easy. Unmask the mystery of the mask. So using the current project, press the eye icon on the blank layer to hide that layer. Click the picture frame layer to select it. Press the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel to add a layer mask to the selected layer and let the magic begin. Now you can see the image of the beautiful lady below the picture frame layer.
Notice the selected area became white and the non-selected area became black on the layer mask thumbnail in the layers panel. Now note on the canvas, the black areas of the mask conceal the portion of the image pixels, making them transparent, denoted by the checkerboard pattern, so that those pixels are hit to reveal pixels of the underlying layer. Whereas the white area of the thumbnail mask reveals a portion of the image pixel, making them opaque so that those pixels are seen. Important note. It is important to note that the original image is never altered, only masked, hence the term. For geeks out there, this is called non-destructive editing. To prove this point, hold down the shift key and click the mask thumbnail twice to show and then hide the original image on the canvas. And to enable or disable, denoted by the red X, the mask thumbnail in the layers panel. Hold on the Alt Option key and click the mask thumbnail twice to show and hide the mask itself on the canvas. Let's look at rule number three of mask. Wrap it with me now. Gray will partially conceal and gray will partially reveal. If you paint with gray on a regular mask or a quick mask, the mask will become translucent or semi-transparent in the areas where the gray is painted. Select the paintbrush tool and choose a light gray color. Select the picture frame layer mask thumbnail instead of the image thumbnail. And paint in an area outside of the picture frame. Notice the area on the canvas is semi-transparent because the mask was painted with a gray color. Also note the gray on the mask thumbnail in the layers panel. Press Command or Control plus Z to undo this previous step. Now that we have learned about selections and masks, let's complete our training with a discussion on layers. Let's look at the first rule of layers. Wrap it with me now. The last layer that is selected is the only layer that gets affected. The layer that is selected is the, the only layer that gets affected. So that gets affected. So that gets affected. The layer that is selected is the, the only layer that gets affected. So that gets affected. So that gets While similar, don't confuse this principle with what we've learned earlier about the third rule of selection. Only what is selected gets affected, which refers to selection. We are now talking about layers. Even though you may have multiple layers in the layers panel, the last layer selected will be the only layers that gets affected. Select the blank layer Press the command or control and then click the layer's thumbnail as a shortcut key to get to the selection of that layer even though the layer is hidden. Click the model layer to select it and with the brush tool, draw a large X across the selection. Notice that even though the selection was made on the blank layer, the model layer was affected because it was the last layer selected. The bottom line is a selection once made is available to all layers, but will only affect the last layer selected. Press Command or Control plus Z several times to undo the previous steps. This principle leads us to rule number two of layers. Wrap it with me now. Look behind the scene to see what it means. Or look behind the curtain to see what is certain. Look behind the scene to see what it means. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind the curtain to see where the circle is. Look behind
If you're new to Photoshop, sometimes you must look behind the scene to see what it means. Like what Toto did on the Wizard of Oz. Choose Select, Deselect to deselect the current selection. Click the model layer to select it. And then draw a small selection in the middle of the canvas. Press the delete key to delete the selection. Notice nothing appears to happen on the canvas. However, the selected area was indeed deleted. But it's not apparent because there is an exact copy of the model in the layers below it. You need to look behind the scene in the layers panel to see what actually happened. If you look at the model layer thumbnail, you will see the deleted area denoted by the checkerboard pattern in the middle of the layer's thumbnail. Click the eye icon on the backup layer to turn off this layer. Notice that you can now see the effect of the delete operation on the canvas as well. Press Command and Control plus Z to undo the previous step. Choose Select, Deselect to delete the current selection. Save the file if you desire. Since the bottom layer was made into a smart object, you can easily switch out the image without doing all of the steps that was done earlier again. Click the eye icon on the model layer to hide it. Right click the background layer and select replace content from the menu. In the replace file dialog box that appears, navigate to an image and then click the place button. Press command and control plus T if necessary and scale and position the image to fit the picture frame as desired. Press the enter return key or double click the image to commit the transformation. That was wow. Spell it backwards. Wow. In closing, you have learned several vital principles of selection, masks, and layers from wraps. Moreover, you learned three golden rules of selection, masks, and layers. Practice these techniques on your projects and in no time you too will be wrapping the golden rule of all three golden rules of selection, masks, and layers. The selection mask or layer that is selected is the only one that gets affected. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any more video like this one. Click the link below for a free copy of my ebook. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And remember the wrap the more you learn, the more you may earn.